Brother Glenn Byers, the pastor of the Theodore Church of God, would like to have Brother Daniel there. And I said, only when he's not with me. Amen. <laughs> Brother Daniel came over several nights and sang, throwing a revival. They were a blessing. Those people really enjoy you, brother. They really, they were really touched. Hallelujah. Many times we take things for granted, don't we? We even take one another for granted, don't we? Amen. Sometimes I feel that even as Christians, there are times when we take God for granted as well. And I feel like the things that we have seen occurring in our nation, and that's one of the reasons. Because we have taken God for granted. We expected Him to do things for us. And He wants to do things for us. But how many of you know that God has a requirement for those things that He wants to do for us? And unless we as a nation, as a people, measure up to those requirements, God is not obligated to do anything for us. That's not my message, but it's a good introduction. I'd like for you to turn with me to Psalms chapter 33, one verse of Scripture, verse 12. I was coming to church this morning, the Sunday school, and I passed one place, and it's a uh, BP service station, and they had taken their hard help letters off. They had taken their menus off of the sign and what they had up there was this. God bless America. We've been seeing that quite often this week, haven't we? Not only on signs and marquees, but also in our living room. It comes across our television. We're hearing people such as our President of our United States make that statement. God bless America. Well, that's what I've entitled my sermon morning. God bless America. Psalms chapter 33 verse 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he had chosen for his own inheritance. How many of you can hear me this morning all right? All right. It's coming out okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You have been so good to us, Father, in keeping us. And Father, we pray that you'll continue to keep us throughout the remaining part of our earthly life. We thank you, Lord, that you are omnipotent. There's nothing too hard for you. Even that great hand of yours stretched out over this wonderful nation that you have given unto us as a protection, a divine protection. And we realize this morning, Father, that that umbrella of safety will only be there as long as we keep you as our Lord. Help us now, Holy Spirit, to re receive this message. Give us the words to say the word that God would have us to say and the power to say it therein. And Father, I pray that all of us will be blessed by these words this morning. But I feel that this is our heart's cry, not only as an individual people, but as a nation as a whole. We desire, yes, yea, Lord, we want your blessings upon us. We pray that right now in Jesus' name, that it will become a reality and everyone can say, Amen and Amen. In my revival over there, I started out ministering to those people at Theodore, telling them that there is still power in prayer. Still there are those that will question that. They'll say, does God hear our prayers? And I'm here to tell you this morning, yes, friend, God hears the prayers of the sincere believer when they pray. We have ample proof of that, that God hears the prayers of His children. For example, on a gloomy day of the year 1857, a man in New York City by the name of Jeremiah Lanthier scanned the morning newspaper as he rode on his 
toward his place of work, uh, wet labor. He was reading in the local newspapers there. He became very depressed by what he was reading. And how many of you know the newspaper will do that to you? You don't find too much good stuff in there. All you'll find is a whole lot of depressing stuff. And he was reading how the depression was gripping this great nation of ours and was causing fear and panic amongst the people of the United States of America. Factories were shutting down. The production was being stopped. Thousands were being unemployed. We're hearing that today also, are we not? Northwest Airlines laying off 30,000 people. Other airlines jumping on that bandwagon we're seeing here in Mobile. Other different places that have closed down. The, uh, the, the uh, paper mills have closed. And there are many others that are laying off, downsizing, they call it. He was reading all of this in his local newspaper, beginning very depressed. And although Jeremiah Lanthier was not a big industrious there in New York City, he had one important uh, distinction about him, church, and that was this. He was a man who had great faith in God. Hallelujah. Concerned with the economic condition that was prevailing and gripping our nation, he decided he wanted to do something about it. And so he sent a note out to all of his business acquaintance telling them that on each day at noontime, there in his office, he was going to have a prayer meeting. On that first day, he, he, would be, he was very positive in his thinking. Um, he was operating in that realm of faith. He took 20 chairs and he formed a circle there in his office, expecting at least 20 of his friends to show up in this prayer meeting. Can I tell you, nobody showed on the first day. But all alone, he sat there with those other 19 empty chairs and, and he fervently prayed that God would bring about a great change in him and in America. The second day, he was encouraged. A few friends showed up and joined in the prayer meeting. And a short time later, a similar gathering was started on Wall Street. And finally, another group gathered on Broadway. And then like wildfire, the movement spread to all parts of this beautiful country of ours. Hallelujah! The moral tone of the nation then was changed, was affected, and there was a great upsurge in the spiritual life of the people. Some historians even say that the effort of this united prayer and faith was a very integral part of the improvement of the economy which soon followed afterward. Psalms 33 and 12 Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Hallelujah! And the people whom He had chosen for His inheritance. While we recognize this morning that prayer has indeed done much for individuals and has done a whole lot for homes and churches and nations, there's something about prayer that many folks still do not quite understand. Do you know that many of the songs that we sing are actually prayers? If you turn in your hymn book to page 141, you'll find there a very beautiful hymn, but yet it's also a song that we sing. He's asking that the songwriter's asking there for God to cleanse him from all sin. Look at it. He says, Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior. Know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. Hallelujah. Well, glory. He's asking God to cleanse him from all sin. What a prayer. Hallelujah. My, we have ample proof that God does indeed hear those songs because some folk will say, okay, I agree, preacher. We do have some songs in our hymn book that are actually prayers, but does God hear those types of, of prayers? Oh, yes, church. He certainly does. For example, for many years, we have been singing that prayer, that hymn song that Kate Smith made very popular and famous many years ago. God bless America. Hallelujah. And as we have sang that song unto the Lord, can I tell you, God heard from His throne on high and He has blessed America. Hallelujah. Amen. In a world that seems like it's in other chaos, we can always be thankful that God has allowed you and I, first of all, to be born in America. Amen. Something you hardly ever hear a citizen say is this. I wish I lived in some other country. No, America's living standards, my friend, is the envy of the world. 
Amen. A missionary asked a young Jamaican one time what it was he was going to do with his life. And his answer was, my greatest desire is to one day be able to go to America. Oh, hallelujah. Many countries, they have built walls to keep people from leaving their country. And while other countries are tearing down walls, just like they did in Germany in the Berlin Wall. Hello? Hallelujah, because they want to come to America. We have people uh, that will try to get over here in little bitty boats uh, at the risk of their life. Uh, we have other people that are trying to slip across the border even at, um, all, many times at the risk of their own life. Uh, we Americans are a blessed people this morning, church. I say we are a blessed people. Make no mistake about it. But why, Brother Jim, are we so blessed? Psalms 33 and 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom He had chosen for an inheritance. Hallelujah. I want us to look briefly at the foundation of America. We are only as strong as the foundation on which we build. And if you know how to do carpentry work and build houses, you know that to be so. We know also, because we've heard her preach so many times, that if Jesus Christ built not the foundation, the work will be in vain. If we're going to have a church that's got to be built on none, no one else but Jesus Christ. Amen? Anyone who has ever studied our history knows that this nation was founded upon a Christian foundation. People came here looking to serve freely the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. How sad it is, though, to discover that there are some people here in America, in our society, who are trying to rewrite our history books. Why? Because as our children read the true account of how great this nation was founded, they read over and over again how Christian men and women who believe what this Bible teaches, hallelujah, was the main ones in this country and how this country was built by. It was courageous men who wrote our nation's constitution, believed in the Word of God. For example... When those pilgrims landed at Pilgrim, uh, Plymouth Rock, they knelt down upon that shore just as soon as their feet uh, could touch solid ground again, and they thanked God for this new country. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, church, they had a lot of things to be thankful for. Well, you see, they had left the land that was persecuting them for their religion, for their worship. Mine, so they came to this land hoping to be free to worship God. And you can see the living God throughout all of our history. In Washington, D.C., I don't know how many have ever been there, but on the base of every one of the statues of our forefathers, you'll find Scripture. Amen. I, I was born not too awfully far from there. I visited many times. I know what I'm telling you. And matter of fact, reach in your pocket. You pull out a coin or a dollar bill or some form of our money, and on there you'll find the slogan, In God We Trust. Hallelujah. The first schools were taught by pastors in one-room classrooms and in the churches across America. When the Continental Congress faced great problems and difficulties, they knew what to do. They turned to God in in prayer, hallelujah. Benjamin Franklin one day called on the members of Congress to fall on their knees to pray. Listen, the church of Jesus Christ was the center of every new settlement in this great land when it was being developed. Did you know that John Jay, the first Supreme Court Justice of the United States of America, and the true expert on the Constitution, said it was a duty, not a right, a duty of every people to elect Christian leaders. Hallelujah. Did you know that James Madison, the writer of our Constitution of the United States, said that the Constitution was written for a Christian people and was wholly inadequate for any other? Did you know that when we first printed the first piece of money in our land, it held the picture of Moses upon it? Oh, our forefathers knew, church, if they were going to build a strong nation, they had to build it on a strong foundation. And so they built it on the Word of God. Hallelujah. My Lord, help us. How many of you remember the story of Valley Forge? Amen. General Washington's army was up there starving, nearly freezing to death. And you know what? They, they were fighting against an enemy almost against insurmountable odds. Our history book tells us 
that George Washington at that time was down on his knees in the snow. Hallelujah. Praying. We can't hardly get people to kneel on padded floors now. Come on, you can say amen. You know what I'm telling you. So, my, here he was. This clothing was inadequate for the winter weather that was there. They had very little food. And food gets off heat. Hello? And there they were with inadequate clothing. Not enough food to give off enough body heat. And yet we find them kneeling down in wet, cold, frigid snow. Praying in the Lord God. Hallelujah. For mercy. Oh, hallelujah. And thanking Him for His amazing grace. Our history books, church, declare, at least they used to, that America was founded on God. Hallelujah. This is why God has blessed this nation of ours so much. Church, we have sung, God bless America. And God has heard and God has answered our prayer. He has richly blessed the people of this nation. Now let's look at our resources. I don't know how anybody could drive across this great land of ours and not see how God is blessed. Amen? I mean, look at, the, look at this. Everything that we need, we can grow here. Amen. God has not only given us enough to feed this nation, but to, enough to feed all of those of other nations as well. God has given the people of America the technology, the equipment, the, the rich soil, and the weather conditions that, that make it possible not only to feed this whole nation of our church, but all the other people of the world on only a very small portion of land. People in other countries are starving. And I, know, I know I've been over there. I've seen little kids, they just wait for our lunch and supper period to be over with so that they can get to our garbage cans and dig out those things that we threw away. I've seen them fighting off the rats as big as our house cats to get a piece of morsel of food that was discarded. We are some of the most wasteful people in the world. Amen. My, I don't want to dwell too long right there, but I bet I could stir up a stink real quick. Hello? My, we are blessed. The dream of those people, oh, if only they had some means, some way that they could come to America because of what we have to offer. Church, when it comes to resources, I want us to look at our beautiful land. As one travels around the United States today, we see so many beautiful things here. I mean, other places have got beautiful places, but they don't have near what we have. There's no other country in the world that can boast of more beauty than what God has blessed us with. For instance, how many have ever been to Niagara Falls? What a beautiful, magnificent place, isn't it? I mean, that's where newlyweds go to, to celebrate and, and to kick off their, their newfound life as they're married. Amen. And, and the Grand Canyon, what beauty, what splendor. I don't know how God could ever put such color in the side of walls like He has there. And then that river that flows way down on the bottom. A beautiful, beautiful place. It'll just blow your mind standing on the rim of that canyon and seeing the handiwork of God. It's almost like He took His fingernail and just scratched it to the earth. Hallelujah. And then how about Yellowstone National Park? My, with those beautiful things over there, old faithful spouting up every so often. My, the beauty, the splendor. The Red Wharf Forest of California. My, they can take those trees and, and cut a circle out of and drive automobiles to it. They're so huge and so beautiful. I don't know, they must be hundreds of feet tall that stand there. All the, the beauty and the majesty of this great land you and I live in. And then how about some of you just, just getting back from Tennessee? How about those mountains called the Smoky Mountains? My, about mid-October, I tell you, it's just a blaze with the beauty, the grandeur, hallelujah, of the, of the artistic touch of Almighty God on the leaves and on the mountainside. It's beautiful, amen. Oh, God has indeed blessed America, hallelujah. God could see one day in all His omnipotence a group of people in a foreign land 
seeking a land where they could practice religious freedom. He knew they would land here, church. Amen. And, and he, they did. They were on the shores of present day America. And then he also knew that when they did, they would fall to their knees and ask God to help them to establish a great nation. God has heard them. God has blessed them. God has heard us. And God has blessed us with a beautiful land. Hallelujah. How about our freedoms? Sometimes Christians in America become frustrated by the many things they see and hear. Amen. It's, it's kind of negative. But they have to tolerate these things if we want the freedom to express what we think. I mean, there are people in other nations, if they said some of the things about their leader we had the freedom to say about ours, they would be hauled off to a concentration camp or maybe even shot to death. This last president we had, I mean, we had more degradatory marks made about him than I believe every president we've ever had. Hello? I talked to a lot of Alabamians during that time, and I wonder how in the world he ever got elected, because everybody in Alabama seemingly voted no for him. But Jerry, there he was, the president of our United States. Look at the things that he'd done. My, that brought a reproach upon this nation of ours. Hey, Amen. But yet we have we we would sit in our living rooms and we would talk about him and we would say bad things about him. Come on. We would do it in our workplace and we would tell degradatory things about him in the workplace. We've got a freedom here in America to say those things. Thank God for that. Can I tell you that there are people in other lands would love to have that freedom? Hallelujah. My, there are also those ones out there in other countries that have the churches that can't preach what they want. Pastors would love to be able to come here to America and preach and teach on the things that this Bible says. Hallelujah. We have that privilege. We have that freedom here in this great land of ours. This is the foundation upon we have placed this place, this world. Thank God. Hallelujah. He blesses America. Now let's look at our future. Pericules Built a nation upon culture, and it failed. Caesar built a civilization upon power, and it failed. Our forefathers found an America upon God, and the America we love will live so long as we continue to honor the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom He had chosen for an inheritance. The greatest danger in this country, church, is a trend that has been building for some time. And this trend is that our country and our people have been denying that God is to be Lord of our nation. They kicked Him out of our schools. They kicked Him out of our courtrooms. They're trying to kick Him out of all public offices. Listen, if there ever was a time when churches across this nation needed to be filled, it's now. It's today when they seen the hand of the devil, the saint. He's the destroyer. He's the, the one who has come to kill, to steal, to destroy. And after seeing what his hand was able to do in New York City and Washington, D.C., every church across this beautiful and great blessed land of ours ought to be packed full of people that are thanking God for his blessings. Hallelujah. 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 But you know what many of them are doing? They're heading to the beaches. They're heading to the mountains to serve the gods of entertainment, pleasure, and recreation. Many of the citizens of this God-blessed country will only mention the name of God when they use it in a profane manner. The Medes and the Persians could have had a great nation. A nation blessed of God. But instead they chose the God of strong drink and self-destructed through drunken parties one after another. So their civilization was demolished from the face of the earth. God then used Joseph to raise up Egypt. However, 400 years after that, they forgot what God had done for them, church. And Egypt fell from being a great nation like a falling rock. 
Greece had some of the greatest leaders of my and military commanders uh, that ever lived. Alexander the Great had conquered the then known world and he was unable, however, to conquer himself. He also died in a drunken stupor and the civilization of Greece stopped being a great nation. Rome became very proud of ruler of her day, but then it began to crumble as the people began to thrive on lust and luxury, and ultimately it too deceased or stopped being a great nation. Listen, the people of America need to read and reread the history of the nations that have fallen, and remember that this nation was made great because our people honored God. Our forefathers knew how to pray. I said our forefathers knew how to pray. And they knew how to seek God's guidance in every decision that they had to make. And now here we are following in the same footsteps of those nations who have fallen before us. Our people are quickly forgetting God. We must be reminded that when the nations forgot God, God forgot them. We must turn this trend around. Hallelujah. Or all is lost, church. We must bring America back to God. Oh, hallelujah. And I feel like this is probably why the things occurred like they did and in the way that they did. God pulled His hand of mercy and His hand of safety away just for a brief moment. Sometimes, church, we need a wake-up call. And oh, I said, sometimes we need a wake-up call. Sometimes it's personal. And God allow that big sea to hit upon our bodies to get our attention. Sometimes it may take a death in our family to get us awake. To let us know, hey, you've got to get away from this thing called sin and fall back on your knees in holy repentance to me. And so, He's calling out to America. Yes, I want to bless you. I want you to be my people. I've chosen you as my inheritance. But you must repent and return back to the former pathway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Closing with one of those great hymns. Listen to it. God bless America, land that we love. Stand beside her and guide her. Through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the ocean, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. Oh, God bless America, my home. Just stand with me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father, for blessing us. Thank you for your blessing on me. Father, one person can make a difference. And I'm praying you'll find that one person in this small congregation this morning who will be willing to stand in and fill the gap and say, Yes, Lord. I will make you my Lord and my God. There might be someone else that would stand and say, Yes, Lord. I'm going to stand in and fill the gap. I'm going to praise your name on every street corner and every place my feet will carry me. Someone else might be in here and say, Yes, Lord, I'll stand in and fill the gap. And I'll preach your word until you call me home. Oh, how we need a people of America to unite again, Father. Hallelujah. To lift our voices up in one accord. In one place. Oh, hallelujah. Magnifying and making again God the ruler of this great nation. The leader of all. Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, that again we might know your blessings upon us. Hallelujah. Right now, Father, have your way. As you speak and talk to the hearts of these that are gathered here today. I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Should there be anyone here this morning you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior?
let you know after hearing this why this land is as great as it is. It's not because of your sinfulness, your slothfulness, and your waywardness. No, it's because of the child of God who has completely surrendered to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But you would like to make that change this morning. You'd like to become a child of Jesus and be blessed also like everyone else. You slip that hand up right now. Take the Bible. Let me again pray for me. I'm lost and I'm undone. But I desire the blessings of God upon my life. I realize the only way I can receive that is to make Him Lord of my life. Would you raise that hand up? like those faithful forefathers that landed at Pilgrim's Rock. And they knelt there on that shore of the sweet deliverance for them at that time. And they said, thank you, Father. Thank you for watching us across that great stormy sea. Thank you for bringing us safe into this great new land. Now we won't go a step further without you leading us. These that are standing here, Father, they feel that way, I know. That's why they came to this. They want you to use them Lord, telling that they might indeed be that bright and glorious beacon of hope to a lost and dying world. Father, they don't want to take a step without you leading them. Holy Spirit, without you guiding them, without you empowering them. So don't let one leave this place this morning without making yourself real. Let them know that you are the God of all creation. You are the God that has blessed America so wonderfully these 2,000 some odd years. And Father, you'll continue to bless us as long as we're one nation under God, indivisible, and justice for all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hug somebody around the neck, shake somebody by the hand, say, hey, I'm proud to be an American, but I'm even more so glad that I'm a Christian. Hallelujah. God bless you.